So I'm going to show you guys a system design question, and it's going to be uh, design a API rate limiter. Now, if you're watching this video, you're probably preparing for a interview at a major tech company, Amazon, Microsoft, Google, Facebook, and Apple. They probably ask a, they're probably going to ask a system design question. And if you've never done these questions before, they can be really tricky. But I'm going to show you how to do one right now, which is um, designing a rate limiter. So if you're not familiar with a rate, num rate limiter, rate limiter, what it's supposed to do is limit requests to a server to prevent DDoS attacks and API misuse. So what it looks like is if you have an IP address hitting a server and the IP address is exceeds a certain number in a given time frame, then it will start blocking the requests. So in this case, it blocks any request over four for every second. So um, to show another visualization of this, let me pull up the uh, rate limiter. This is a fully working version. So if you imagine each one as one second and each one of these circles as a request, then every third request for every second is going to be blocked. So this request will turn back 500 or 200 but message will be rate limit over so now um, this is sort of the visualization of what we're trying to do um, and the best way to approach these kinds of questions is to first ask a little bit about the requirements So for this requirement, we would have to say it's going to be for uh, 15 requests per second, and it is going to it is going to block the requests, and we should be able to handle a lot of requests. So let's say like 100,000 requests per second. So now, um, how how I approach these would be to understand the core the core problem, and the core problem is figuring out how to block these requests as they come in. And um, there's a couple strategies we can do with this. We can either use a fixed window, so these three would come in and this would be blocked but if these three come in then this would not be blocked so a fixed window would have pros would be simplicity but cons will it will let requests through when they should have been blocked And there's another approach, which is a sliding window. The pros of this is that it works all the time. Cons it might be more difficult to implement. So when I say sliding window, I mean that a window of one second is always going to be active and then is going to slide based on the requests. So if this window hit the three, then it would block that request. However, if this was the window, then both of those requests would go through. So now we have the uh, two options. The sliding window is ideal one in this case. So let's go ahead with that implementation. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna implement this using a queue. So every time a request comes in, 
we're going to place it on a queue with a timestamp. And here, this is where I like to indicate what's the size of the request. So the request can be four bytes, which is an IP address. And the timestamp can be a uh, epoch timestamp, which is arbitrary values. So um, since we're blocking um, every three requests, the queue max size would be three. The total size would be eight times three, 24 bytes per IP address. And to cover 500,000 users, we would have 12 million bytes, which actually turns out to be 12 megabytes worth of memory. So now we found out that we can actually store this on one computer, on one server. So this actually makes our problem easier and we don't have to start considering segmenting um, and uh, hosting multiple instances. So to make this a reality, we would need some sort of in-memory cache. And since we're storing everything in a queue, we need a key value store that can hold data structures, which Redis is perfect for. So we need a Redis server to hold the, the queues of the current rate limits. The key is the IP address. The value is the value, the data structure of the queue. So to see that key, 192 and 68, 1 1.1, and then the queue data structure. Now the overall architecture is we have a client We have a web server. We have an application server. And we have a database. So ideally, we would want to put the rate limiter here and then we'd want it to interact with the web server and here when we have the rate limiter we're storing this in memory and we can keep this on one computer so we really don't need to uh, expand it any more than this. However, uh, one way we could expand it is if we added a load balancer in, it, in case to handle a lot of uh, requests um, to the web server. We can add a load balancer here that would be able to spin up multiple web servers. So there you go. This is a simple API rate limiter, similar to the approach that you, you would use to handle a system design interview uh, at Amazon, Google, Facebook, Microsoft, Apple. Thanks for watching and like and subscribe to see more.